Welcome back. In the last video, we have covered the first connective AND. So let's proceed to the next connective OR. Here is the next connective OR. It is represented by symbol V and it's also called as disjunction. Let's take an example. To get pension, you should be at least 60 years old or have 20 years service. And here is the connective OR. This statement can be broken to simple propositions. P. You are 60 years old. Q. You have 20 years service. And to get pension, P or Q. What does this mean? So if you satisfy this condition, you get your pension. Or if you satisfy this condition, you get it. If you satisfy both, yes, still you get it. Now when is that it will fail? If you don't satisfy this as well as this, that's the case where it's going to be false. So if P is false as well as Q is false, it's going to be false. In all other cases, it will be true. That's true, 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 false, false, true. It's always true. So we can memorize this as this junction is true when at least one of P or Q is true. And it's just false when both of them are false. Now that we are done with this junction, think about this statement. On a third mill, you can walk or run. It has a connective OR. So it should fall into the category of disjunction. So let's analyze with truth tables. So false and false, that is you can't walk and you can't run. That's not correct. Therefore it should be false. So this is fine. The statement has OR, that is you can walk or run. So here it says you can run. So that's correct. And this says that you can walk. That's correct. And lastly, true and true. That means you can walk and run. Is it possible that you can walk as well as run? No, this is not possible. So interestingly, this condition fails and leading to a new operator exclusive or. Exclusive or. It's represented by a circle and a plus in between. And to formulate the table, Let's take the same example. On a treadmill, you can walk or run. Just to avoid the confusion and ambiguity, it's better you add either. Either or. Let's make more sense. On a treadmill, you can either walk or run. Perfect. So if I put it into propositions, P, you can walk and Q, you can run. And the treadmill action is P exclusive or Q. This statement will be true only when either this or this is true. That's the second and third case. True false or false true. In these two cases, it will be true. If both are false, then the statement is false. And when both are true, Still it is false. You can't do both at a time. And we memorize this with exclusive or is true when only one of the P or Q is true. That's these two cases. This is the most important connective. If then. It's represented by a forward arrow. And it's also called implication. So let's take an example. If you work for 10 hours a day, then you get your bonus. And we can easily see the if then. And if you split two simple propositions, P is you work for 10 hours a day, Q is you get bonus. And bonus is only possible if P implies Q. Take a minute and think about this. This is very critical. Let's think about false first. Probably this statement is given by your boss and he's saying that if you work for 10 hours a day, you get the bonus. But you're not really happy with the proposal. So you don't work for 10 hours a day. Therefore, P is false. And your boss doesn't give you a, a bonus. Possible. And it's quite acceptable because you didn't do it. You don't get it. 
perfect and if it is true let's say you worked and you get bonus and that's pretty much acceptable now if you work for 10 hours a day and your boss doesn't give you the bonus so will you accept it 100% no you will go and fight in fact i myself will go and fight what the heck why don't you give me the bonus so this is something which is not acceptable and what if you don't work your boss is very generous and he gives you bonus do you accept it yes i'm very much happy with that and here is a key sentence for this a true statement can never imply a false statement 70% of the gate questions asked from this subject are from either implication or by implication so there's an absolute need to understand them clearly so let's analyze them let's go for a general analysis first we have p and q and p implies q so we have taken the example of uh, work and bonus so p is work and q was bonus in logic there is a terminology to talk about p and q p is called antecedent and q is called consequent and when we say if p then q we are trying to say that if at all you take the p as true that is if you are working then you must get the bonus then you accept it and if they don't give the bonus you don't accept it so in english we can write this as if p then q or p implies q let's look into the dependency relation p depends on q but q is not depend on p your work depends on the bonus if it is guaranteed that you will going to get a bonus then you are sure to work so i can write this as q is necessary for p how about q's dependency on p if you work you'll get it if you don't work still you get it this is read as p is sufficient for q the third is perspective think of a case where your boss is talking to you boss says you get bonus if you work and you reply i will work only if you guarantee the bonus so this can be written as you get it if you work and what do you say i will work only if you guarantee me this is slightly confusing so be a little careful while memorizing this so putting all the possible english statements to represent implication all these statements are same if p then q p implies q q is necessary for p and p is sufficient for q q if p or p only if q similar to inclusive and exclusive or sometimes if can be very much confusing like in the statement you can take the flight if you buy the ticket so here we have if so at first glance we might think that this is an implication but at a closer look we can identify that this statement will fail in few conditions required for implication this is true only when this is true as well as this is true or if this is false this has to be false so these two conditions it will follow and here it is false so there is no problem with this but this one is something which we need to be careful this fails and leading to a new operator if and only if also called as by implication if and only if is represented by a double arrow and it's also called by implication you can take the flight if you buy the ticket so p is you can take the flight q you bought the ticket and journey is possible if p by implication q let's start with false 
you didn't buy the ticket and you don't take the flight. Perfectly acceptable. If both are true, you bought the ticket and you got into the flight. This is acceptable. If any of these two conditions fail, then it's not acceptable. True cannot by imply a false or false cannot by imply a true. So these two will become false and false. So we can memorize this as by implication is true when P and Q have same truth value. That's either both true or both false. These are few by implication statements and all of these mean the same. P if and only if Q, P double if Q, P is necessary and sufficient for Q, if P then Q and conversely. With this, we are done with the basic logical operators. Pay more attention for exclusive or, inclusive or, uh, implication and by implication. They are tricky and confusing. So put more time and get grip on that subject. So let's move on to the operator precedence. The logical operators have the precedence order as follows. Brackets are given the highest priority, then followed by not, and, or, implies and finally by implication. This plays a very important role when the statements are ambiguous. Something like this. This statement can be paired in multiple ways. Probably I can do it like this. Or maybe like this. Or even like this. So when you have multiple operators, we need to follow the specific order. We have AND. So AND is given the first priority, then followed by OR, and finally by application. So when the evaluation starts, this has to be evaluated first, followed by this, and finally this. It's always good practice to put the brackets whenever you write it. Let me take one more. For this statement, the first priority is given to the negation, then followed by AND, then followed by OR, and finally the left out one by application. So we are done with the basics of propositional logic. So let's take few questions. Which of these is a proposition? Answer this question. This is a command, therefore not a proposition. Who are you? It's a question, so not a proposition. x square equals 4. This is an open statement, therefore no. Go what then has a dog? Yeah, he might have a dog or may not, so it could be either true or false. Therefore, this is the proposition. And the option is D. What is the truth value of P or Q and negation Q? If P is true and Q is true. Options are true, false, sometimes true, can't protect. So let's write the statement P or Q and negation Q. And they gave P is true and Q is true. So let's substitute true or true. And negation of true is false. Again, true or true is true. And followed by false, true and false is false. So this is right and the answer is B. Which among the below statements is correct when both P and Q are true? So let's try. So negation P and negation Q. That is false and false. False and false is false. So this is not correct. False or false is again false. So even this is not correct. Now false and true. This is false. It's also not correct. Then false or true equals true. So this is correct. And the answer is D. Wrapping it up, we studied about connectives starting with not. True becomes false and false becomes true. Next was and. This is true only when both the statements are true. The next was OR. OR could be an inclusive OR 
or an exclusive or if it's a general or an inclusive or this is true if at least one of p and q is true an exclusive or is either p is true or q is true then only it is true next was if either it's a normal if or a by implication if if it's a implication a true statement can never imply a false statement if it's by implication this is true only when both are true or both are false